very, very pleased to welcome on my left uh, here today in conjunction with Science and Sport is two-time ITU world champion Helen Jenkins. So please welcome Helen. Uh, I'm going to just tell one little story about Helen before we start. I don't know whether she'll remember this, but this is just how nice and how unassuming a, a person Helen is. Vancouver 2008, Helen won her first World Championship title. It was the, the, the last time that the World Championships was a one-day race. You may know after that we moved to the, the World uh, Championship Series as it was, now the World Triathlon Series, like a Formula One season. Anyway, it was cold, it was wet, it was miserable. Helen comes from Wales, probably felt quite at home. <laughs> And she won that way, so sprint finish with is it Sam Warren now? I forget yeah. who it was now. Sarah Haskins. Sarah Haskins. Yeah. Sprint finish, won, won that race. So you'd think, I'm the best in the world, I'm the superhero. Anyway, the next night, and I was, I, I was there racing myself. I will add I was just there to make up the numbers in the age group race. Certainly wasn't uh, taking home any medals or doing anything uh, great. And anyway, we had the, the, the awards ceremony was inside a huge arena. I think it was an ice hockey arena or a basketball, whatever it is that they do in Vancouver. Now you think that Helen would be getting the VIP treatment. But anyway, I was sitting up in the stands area and I looked down and I see this petite lady queuing up by the little stand for the drinks. And it was Helen just standing in the queue, unassuming like anybody else. And we have a very large animal coming through. But anyway, that wasn't part of the story. And I was there and I just thought, she just won the World Championships the day before. I can't let her queue up and buy her own drink. So anyway, I ran down. Helen, sorry, I can't let you pay for your drink. But like a true champion, she let me buy the drink. I think it was a Diet Coke or something. So even the day after, it wasn't, oh, let's have some champagne. So anyway, nobody can accuse Helen of, uh, Helen of getting too big for her boots. But first of all, let's start off. How are you at the moment? Because you started last year so fantastically. And then unfortunately, as we so often see with athletes, a bit of an injury stopped you going to the Commonwealth Games. So let's get that bit out of the way first. How are you, Helen? Uh, yeah, I'm doing really well, thanks. Um, I recovered from my um, injury last year, which was a tear in my plantar fascia. So that was a pretty painful injury. So a lot of rehab since, and I've had a really good winter's training. I, I did get the flu in December, which was a bit unfortunate. But um, since then, everything's been going all right. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to it. Uh, to another season, really. So it's a very important season, um, probably second only in importance, I guess, to, to an Olympic year. But important because this is the year, hopefully, if you can, can meet those standards, that you can actually secure your place in what would be potentially your third Olympic game. So just tell us what that involves for you and, and what that means in terms of what your focus is going to be for the 2015 season. I mean, it, it's amazing how quick uh, an, an Olympics comes around that we're going to have, um, we'll have Olympic selection in August this year and September this year so yeah it's, it happens uh, it happens so fast so that's going to be my focus for this year and uh, hopefully I can get selection out of the way if not then we'll, I'll try and qualify in, in 2016 but um, yeah it's, 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 it would be amazing to try and make a third Olympics and I'm, I feel um, extremely lucky that I've been to two and to, to make a third would be, um, would be brilliant. And I have to say, over sort of the last three years, leading up to that pe period, you were really almost the lone flag-waving top top performing ITU female from, from Great Britain. You were almost out there on your own. You were the one getting all the medals, winning the races. The ladies have really stepped up the game, haven't they, in, in Great Britain? Since, since uh, 2012, we've seen uh, Jodie Stimpson, Non Stanford, uh, Vicky Holland also got a, got a medal in the Commonwealth Games. So there's now a really, really strong, in-depth team at, in, at the ITU uh, racing for Great Britain at the moment. Yeah, it's been really exciting to see like, more of the girls coming through. I mean, yeah, before it was just kind of me out there on my own. So we've got a number of girls that can win medals at the World Series events now. And I think the more competition there is between, you know, in, in one country, it really pushes people on. You know, 
that I think success breeds success and the more we have it brings through younger athletes, junior development athletes, they see girls doing it and they think you know I can do that too, I can, you know I, that can be me and I think it's, uh, it's, it's a great atmosphere to be part of a team that's performing well at the highest level and I think that's what we have in British triathlon at the moment. Um, and one thing I also see as a, as a benefit for you, but also for them, is, is the way that all of those British girls race. It, it, their approach is very similar to yours. It's let's swim hard, let's bike hard, let's run hard, let's not make it a tactical race. You want to get out, and we saw you, I think it was Cape Town last year, you were all at the front, absolutely you know, smashing the pace as hard as possible. So that must be, must be great that, although you are racing each other, come the end of the race, it, it, almost teammates during the race just by accident of, of how you're all approaching uh, you know, tactically your events. Yeah, I think it's a really positive uh, it's a really positive way of racing. We all want to swim, bike and run hard. Like no one wants to wait for the run. You know, everyone's prepared to take the race on and we're all out there racing. You know, at certain points of the race we're all racing together. At certain points of the race you're racing against each other. But yeah, it's, it's really, it's a dynamic way of racing and, and the Cape Town was brilliant. I think we, we kind of realised that for the first first lap that I think there was five Brits in the front pack and out of twelve and we were all, all working together and everyone's like giving each other encouragement and Lucy Hall's hilarious, she's always like shouting at us to like go faster the whole time. So it's great. It's a it's a it's an exciting environment to be in when you're racing like that. No one wants to sit around for 40 kilometres and just wait for the run and I think all the British girls are willing to take the races on. Um, looking ahead, hopefully, and I believe that you will, you'll, you'll, you'll qualify for that Olympic Games, be it this year or next year. Um, touching also on, on that, how, how you race and the, the nature of the course, I believe that the Rio course is, is potentially a pretty tough course, which will mean fair racing, hard racing. That must be, given your strengths, which are, to me, your strengths are your strength, your ability to be very, very good in all three disciplines, something that must be very encouraging and motivating for you as a goal. Yeah, it's really exciting to see the Rio course. It's a beach swim, uh, beach start in the sea, then a it, it's potentially it's meant to be a really hilly bike course so coming from South Wales that's perfect um, I love swimming in the sea as well I think all the all the girls that all the British girls especially will see that course and think that's a great course for us you know we, we want it we want it to be a hard swim and bike um, possibly a couple of Americans that maybe won't like the course <laughs> mentioning yeah. no names but yeah I mean the, um, the, the world champion last year was an American called Gwen York and she's a fantastic runner and I don't think any of us are quite at her running level at the moment so when we're looking at the course seeing a tough swim a tough bike I think it just plays to our strengths so that's the way I'm looking at it let's just take a bit of a step back now it, it seems like you've been in triathlon a long time but you're still a, still a relatively a youngster um, how did you first get into the sport and, and was it as a triathlete? Did you start off, for example, yeah, that we, we see the Brownies now, they've pretty much been triathletes since they were eight and nine. Were you in, in, in the same way or did you come from swimming or, or another sport into triathlon? I was a swimmer to start with and I started doing triathlon when I was 15 or 16. I find it so interesting to speak to um, a lot of the juniors coming through now because they've been doing, uh, I had a little training camp with them um, four junior girls last about this time last year and they'd all been doing triathlon since they were like seven or eight and I thought that was amazing that all of four of them like four of the best juniors in the country have been doing triathlon that long so I think it's really positive people are getting into it so early it's uh, such a change from when I started when in your triathlon life you, know, you came, came into it from a swimmer into triathlon A did you think yeah I, I would like to make this a career and secondly what, what was the key moment when you thought or you realised actually I can not just be good at this I can be very very good at this and I can challenge for world championships and, and Olympic and European medals and the first time I thought I could do it as a career was when I got paid so that made a big difference earning a bit of money um, quite an objective measure that one someone's <laughs> given me money someone gave me some money for doing you know doing what I really enjoyed doing so that was a bonus um, I think when I first realised I could potentially um, 
um, win races or, or you know become one of the best in the world. So I, I podiumed at my first ever World Cup in Manchester, in Salford in Manchester, and I remember I came third and, and I remember crossing the line. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. And I think those sort of results give you a, a bit of faith in your ability and, and yeah, I think it, it probably went from there. That changed my mindset and thought I can compete on the world stage. Um, one of the things that, that athletes and coaches always talk about is making training very specific to, to the athlete. Not just it's not just a, a one size fits all. Otherwise, we would only need one coach and one big manual. Um, a number of the athletes uh, in Britain will train in the, you know, the the Leeds factory, and there's others at like, uh, Jody with Darren Smith and Co. As far as I'm aware, most of your your training have always been based at home or South Wales. What is it about that that, that works for you? Because clearly it's worked for you for so long. So just tell us a little bit, a how that works and what your your day-to-day -day training is. Is it is it on your own or do you have a, a range of training partners that uh, help you along? Yeah. I mean, my training environment is slightly different. There's a lot of athletes that train in centres, but you know, I've, I've found what works for me over the years, and I know that I love going on training camps with um, you know some of the other girls from British Triathlon and the other athletes. But um, if I'm in that environment too long, I, I get too competitive and I'll burn myself out within a week. So for me, it's it's great to go away on a training camp and then come home and base myself at home. It's it's a very low pressure environment for me. I swim with a swimming club, so. Most most of the, the kids are, you know, they're 16 or under, so for them the biggest issue is who's boyfriend, who's girlfriend that day, so it's, it's, it's really no one cares what I'm doing, but I love that. And I've got friends that I train with, I've got the running club that I do um, some running sessions with, So, and my husband who is my coach as well, we do quite a bit of training together, so it's, a, it's an unusual environment maybe, but I found, I found through trial and error that this is the best environment for me. So I guess like the message I take that take from that and is find something that works, but and then have the confidence in it because we we had uh, Paul Newby Fraser who was eight times Ironman World Champion when she said how much she trained there was, there was almost gasped and, is that all she told us how much she trained and I know age group athletes with a full time job and career that train more but that clearly worked for her and whatever it is you're doing works for you I think it is and there's always a lot of pressure to do more training like more training is better or you know this is the next best thing you should be doing this you should be doing that and it's it's really not about that and it's resisting those pressures and, and I think we all fall into that trap um, especially that like you go away on a training camp and you know you might have a three hour ride down and everyone else is doing four hours or five hours and you think oh maybe I should be doing more and uh, and there's always the pressures to do a bit more and you have to be very like sure that of your program and, and sticking to what you want to do and everyone strays off it I, I go away on training camp and come back dead because I've ridden I've ridden the same amount of hours as a Brownlee for a week and it just doesn't work for me but it's I think it's it's having faith in what you're doing and trying to stick to that how have you seen the, the both the, the, the levels at the top level and also the depth of quality progress over your time in the, the ITU world, because it, it seems as though even more than, than ever, there is no room for, for weaknesses. You need to be very, very strong across all disciplines. Um, so have you seen that more and more through your, through your uh, triathlon life and, and effectively a need to just keep improving just to, to stay at the same level? I think that there's everyone striving to improve. I think that you wouldn't be an elite athlete if you were, or any kind of athlete if you didn't want to improve or better yourself or achieve a goal. So, I mean, in terms of the women's race in triathlon, I don't think like the if you look at, I mean, I think Gwen Jorgensen, the American, setting the standard in the run at the moment. But if you compare that to Emma Snowsill's runs, they're very similar. But you probably need a stronger swim bike than maybe Emma did back then. So it's it, it's always changing. I think it's it's being able to change and, and adapt to every course really uh, and every year. I, I try and go into every race when I I want to be able to swim, bike, and run hard. And, and I think you want to be able to deal with every outcome. Every you know. Every if someone attacks on the bike, you want to be able to respond to it. If, if the swim's fast, you need to be able to respond to it. So I think trying to prepare for all conditions is a is a really good way to prepare. Um, tell us about 
what you would consider your best race so far? And not necessarily a race, you may not have won it, and it may not have been a big race, but I always ask this question because uh, I just find it fascinating to know, uh, you know, as all athletes, someday, at some point, you have a day where you just think everything's gone great and I felt light and whatever. So what would you consider your best physical performance? Um, I think it was a race in Kitzbühel. Uh, I think it was in 2011. I came second, actually, to Paula Finley, who had had a great year that year. But I had a great swim. Had a, I think came out second, but a lead over the field. We, I rode really well. And, and the run, I, it was probably one of the best runs I'd raced. We really pushed to the end, and I just didn't quite have the, the, last, the finish over the last kilometre. But it was uh, it's definitely one of the best performances I think I, I gave. And, and I love the conditions in Kitzbühel as well. Beautiful mountain. Cool. It's lovely. You can see Science and Sport have been a long time supporter and sponsor sponsor of you. I guess for, for your racing, which is, tends to be two hours or, or less, the nutrition in training is probably a bigger part of, say, nutrition in racing, just because you train so much. So let's just let's just talk and, and have a, a look at day-to-day -day nutrition, what you have to do, because if you're doing multiple sessions through a day, how you get through a day and, and how... Uh, Regular eating, plus also your, the products that you use helps you get through that. Yeah, I mean, I think nutrition is is one of the biggest parts of what we do, especially as a triathlete. You're training yeah, at least three times a day, so I think in a day-to-day -day week, I think one of the big things for me is the is the protein side of things. It's so important to get the protein in and recover after a session before starting the next. So I'll always have like a protein shake in my bag, um, that, like the Rego shake. That's one of the most important things. And we're doing longer rides, so the, and this comes into the racing aspect as well, is, is having gels. I, I never go out without food in my back pocket for cycling. I've been caught out too many times when I was younger, so it's a really big, it's one of my focuses. And you talk about like how you improve over the years, and my nutrition has improved over the years because you have to look at all those small details, and, and these are the small details that enable you to you know, do, deliver your best on race day. Let's talk about one of the, the tougher areas of being being a pro triathlete, and everybody has it. I can't think of any triathlete that hasn't had to, to deal with it, and that's injuries. Um, you've had your fair share of injuries over the years, which has either meant that you've not been able to go to championships, as last year with the Commonwealth Games, or not being able to perform at the level that you, you'd hoped to. How uh, difficult is it to deal with men deal with that mentally and also as you get more experienced or more mature does that make it easier to be able to have the confidence of what you need to do to recover and to come back? Um, I don't think injuries get any easier each one you have. I think you learn to deal with them better, you, you learn to cope with them. Um, cope with the physical pain. I th the hardest thing is the mental side of an injury because you, whatever level you're at, you, you want to be, you, you, you're normally walking, working towards a goal. So if you can't work towards that goal, you're stopped in your tracks. You can't do what you love every day. Or you, yeah, I think for, the pressures are different. At my, le at my level, I can't do what I want every day. I'm not getting closer to Olympic selection. So if you're looking like further down the line, it's, you know, you, even if you set yourself a goal for the, for the year, I'm going to do this race, I'm going to do this run. And if you can't do it, it's it really like I think emotionally that will affect you more than the physical injury. So it's trying to get get past that. For me, it's having a plan of how to deal with the injury, and, and you know I'm going to I'm going to do all my rehab exercises every day. I'm going to focus on. I think it's focusing on the positive things you can do to overcome the injury is what has helped me get through. But it's it's very tough to do. It's. Uh, it's one of the hardest parts of sport, I would say, is dealing with the setbacks. We always think of tri of, well, not tri triathlon, but, but uh, similar sports as being an individual sport. So when once the gun goes or the hooter goes, it is individual in the sense that it's you out there and it's you to swim, bike, and run. And there's not really a lot that anyone from outside can do. But how you get to that start line is actually dependent on a pretty wide team around you. Just, just talk through 
you know, what are all those elements around that help, you know, Project Helen, if you like, to get to the start line? Because it's more than you just get up in the morning, swim, bike, run for lots of hours, hope you're fit than everyone else and try and win, isn't it? It is. I'm always amazed how many people are actually involved in what I do when you actually count them back. But it's it's massive. I mean, you, you have the sponsors, like, well, science and sport are, are a huge part of what I do because the nutrition side, that my bike sponsor, you know, just the kits, the trainers, all that stuff is a huge part. But there's, there's the, I suppose the core team around me is my my, uh, my coach. I see my physio twice a week. I have a gym strength and conditioning coach. I access all these services from the Welsh Institute of Sports. So that's a massive resource to me to have there. And I mean, I wouldn't be doing what I was doing without these people who were, uh, you know, who helped me. And I also have a, a good friend who's a sports psychologist, so I've worked with her since, you know, for almost 10 years now. So, so it's, uh, those little things make such an impact on how you perform on race day. And, you know, the athlete always kind of gets the glory, but it's the people behind that, that get them there. So this season coming up, uh, we've already just touched briefly on, we've got potential Olympic selection, certainly those Olympic races which are key. What are your uh, other objectives alongside those that you're going to be aiming at for the 2015 season? Well, could, could the World Series starts in March, so I, I think I'll probably miss the first few races and put the emphasis later in the year on the Olympic selection, but I'd love to do well at Hyde Park in London this year. I love racing in Hyde Park, so that'll be a big aim of mine. But most of it is going to revolve around the Olympic selection later in the year. What would be great to do now, we've got plenty of people here, we've got one of the best athletes that we've ever produced in Great Britain, and indeed on the world stage, is to get some questions from the audience, take this opportunity to ask anything either about Helen or how to improve your own triathlon performance. As always, don't be shy. Yeah, you, can ask, you can ask me anything, I don't ask mind. Ask anything, there we go. We've got a, there's a man, he doesn't look like a shy man, does he? <laughs> he looks like a confident man. It's highly. Um, now, besides the physical side of things, I know the mental is probably where you guys are way ahead of the rest of us. So, do you have any tips in each of the three disciplines where you find things are becoming hard when you're training? There's three, I'd say tips, I'd say, yeah, training aids that you can employ to get you over that hill or through that last minute. Like tips to help you sort of get when when things get tough. Um, one of the hardest parts of my day is five o'clock in the morning when the alarm goes off. And like for, for me, that that's when you know the hard part is is just getting out the door and getting it and just getting it done. I can't think at that point. You know, if you you know if you kind of you're tired and you don't want to do a session, it's just don't think about it. Just get your kit on. Just start. And if it, if you feel terrible, then you know stop. But I think you've got to start. You've got to start the session at least. Give it a go. So that's one thing. In the middle of a hard session, you know, I think that's it. Does it's really tough. You, you know, your body screaming at you, and you want to stop. But for me, it's always thinking about the goal. I mean, how satisfied will I feel after the session when I've completed it? If I don't finish the session, I'll feel terrible. I'll beat myself up afterwards. So I think it's. If you're feeling tough, if it, it's getting really tough and you're struggling, just think, I want to finish it because afterwards, you know, you want that feeling of, of the satisfaction of having finished the session. And yeah, I think, and then focusing on the overall goal is really important. You know, when you're you're out for, you're out, it, it's a balance. You know, always doing too more is, is not great. It's, you know, sometimes being in the best shape on the start line means missing a couple of sessions on the way so you don't get injured, you don't get a cold, you don't get sick. That's one of the hardest things to balance is you obviously need the motivation to train but also know those days when you need to give yourself a break. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> it's, it's a very hard thing to do and people are, you know, athletes all over are trying to do it and, you, and, and failing. You get overtraining, injury and that's because you don't know when to stop because people are so motivated. So it's, it's if you can find that balance, make a lot of money selling, <laughs> selling the answer. <laughs> Let's have the next question. Okay, to that, I'll come back to you, uh, artist. Hi, hello. Hi. When you're training for a specific event like a, an Olympic distance triathlon, when you're doing each individual part component of the training, how much more than the race distance should you train? For instance, I forget, should you train to sort of 15 kilometers in a long run if that's if 
that there should be time, there should be distance for a, for a long session? I think um, if you're training for an Olympic distance, I think you want to be able to comfortably make that distance and probably go a bit over. Like I wouldn't say you need to go more than 15k. If you, if you just get to 10, you'd be fine because you know you can do it. I mean, if you're training for an Ironman, you don't you probably don't want to be doing lots of marathon runs like before the day. I think you want to know you can complete it. If you get to, I think if you're training for a marathon and you get to kind of 21, 22 miles and you're training, you're fine. So I think you, you want to know that you're going to be able to make the distance is one of the main things. Um, so I think dis, yeah, by t distance rather than time at that point. And then doing it a few times before, I mean, it obviously it depends massively on how much time you have and, and, and uh, how fit you are going into, into your training. But I'd look at being comfortably able to complete the distance as a, as a good guide. It's interesting you're saying about Lucy on the bike always shouting and being, you know, being kind of driving hard. And as an individual sport, how do you deal with that kind of competitive situation? Because surely you make your own luck in the storm, you make your own luck on the, on the, on the run, but when you're in a group of girls and, and you know, things are happening, you know, packs of people coming together and breaking apart, how do you mentally deal with that kind of hour where you're sort of hostage to what everyone else wants to do? I mean, uh, I always find it a relief when you actually get on the run because the swim is, uh, in our swim, it's very affected by everyone else. You have to, because um, you, you get a massive benefit from being on someone's feet. So it's, um, you can get to the run, you're like, oh, I don't have to worry about anyone else now. But um, I mean, I enjoy it. And it's one of the aspects I really enjoy about Olympic distance racing. I always get asked if I'm going to do Ironman and maybe at some point, but I do enjoy that sort of that on off hard pace. I mean you could be you can be going quite easy at one point and then for no particular reason you're going like maximum effort for the next five kilometers. So I find it I find it fun. I think that's the it, it's painful but it's enjoyable as well. And um, it's just a different aspect of the sport. I'm sorry to bring up that injury again, but I think you had a knee Was there any particular rehab or approach to rehab that you found particularly useful in getting over it? It's, um, I did have a knee problem, but it was um, coming from my back actually. I mean, I've, I've got, um, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons I've had a lot of injuries over the years. I've got a slight um, slippage in my spine and a, and a curve. It's not a pretty, pretty picture and a scan, but um, it's one of, it actually caused a bit of nerve compression that affected my knee. So that was my problem. I mean, everyone's problems are individual. I mean, it's very hard. I mean, if you can get an opinion from a physio, a good physio that you trust, and, and find a good re rehab program to work to. I mean, one of the biggest things with injuries is, is what you do, is what you're doing around it. I think if you can do the, you know, the exercises to strengthen all your, you know, your abs, your glutes, all those things for a triathlon, which for a triathlete, they're kind of the boring things to do, but they can really help. I mean, it, it, it'll depend a lot on, on what your, what your knee, uh, I guess you've had a knee problem, what it is. Yeah, talk, talk to me after, I know a lot about knees. <laughs>